we're going to talk about graphing polar equations and I'm going to do a couple just kind of interesting examples and then there we're going to talk about the three different kinds of polar curves that uh, you'll be expected to do on an AP exam. So those are rows, curves, and lemosomes and lemnus gates. So first, just uh, r equals 2. That means we want all of the points whose distance from the pole is 2, and theta can be anything. So that is if we go out a distance of 2 and we plot all those points, what we're going to get is a circle with radius 2. So a very simple equation in polar form. Now theta equals pi over 4 means we want all of the points whose, that lie on the angle theta equals pi over 4, and r can be anything, so that includes 0 and positive r's, and also negative values of r's. So theta equals pi over 4 is a line through the origin uh, along that 45 degree angle, so with slope 1. Okay, now let's talk about uh, Rose curves. So for Rose curves, uh, they're going to have the form r equals a sine n theta or r equals a cosine n theta. And if n is odd, then that is going to be the number of petals that we have on this Rose curve. If n is even, then we will have 2n petals, twice as many. So let's take a look at our first one here. And since uh, this number is 2 and the biggest that a sign can ever be is 1, then the furthest r can be, the biggest r can be is 2. That's going to be our distance from the pole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put a guideline here uh, and just draw a dotted circle of radius 2. And so I know that all of my curve has to lie on or within this circle. It can't go outside that circle. Now, what I'm going to do next is to figure out what value of theta first makes this sine curve equal to 1, the biggest it can be, because that's going to be the end of our petal. And so I know that sine is equal to 1 when that angle is pi over 2. So I'm going to take the angle, 3 theta, and set that equal to pi over 2, and then solve that for theta. And so dividing by 3 gets us to pi over 6. So that means the end of the first petal is going to lie along the angle theta equals pi over 6. And so I'm going to put a solid dot there. That's the end of the first petal. Because the n is equal to 3, and 3 is odd, we know there's going to be three petals. Those petals will be evenly spaced. So the distance between petals is going to be 2 pi, that's all the way around the circle, divided by the number of petals. So to find, once I know the first petal, which is at pi over 6, the next petal that second petal is going to be, it's going to be, the end point is going to be pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 3, the spacing between petals. And 2 pi over 3 is 4, 6, so that's going to be at 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to go over to the angle 5 pi over 6, and this is where sine will next be equal to 1, and that's going to be the end of our next petal. And finally, the third petal, third and last petal, is going to be the 5 pi over 6 I left off with, plus another 2 pi over 3. So that's going to be 4, 6 plus 5, 6 is 9 pi over 6, and that reduces to 3 pi over 2, which is going down here. And so that 
is the end of our third petal. So to graph this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my pencil on the end of the first petal right here. Then I'm going to turn my gaze across the circle 180 degrees and then go counterclockwise to the end of the next petal. So I'm going to try to connect the end of this first petal with the end of this petal going through the pole, like so. Then, once I'm to that end of that next petal, I'm going to gaze across the circle, 180 degrees, go counterclockwise to the next petal, and repeat. So I'm going to connect this going through the pole with that next endpoint of that petal. And likewise, this is going to take me back to the original one. So I'm going to go through the pole to there, and that is our three petaled rows. All right. Let's take a look at lemosomes. Now, lemosomes have the form y equals a plus b sine theta, or y r equals a plus b cosine theta, and it could be plus or minus. So here what we're going to do is we are going to plot the quadrantal angles. So for lemosomes, we are going to let theta be 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi is going to take us back to 0. And we're going to try to figure out the values of r at each of these. We'll plot those points, which will occur on the x and y axis. We will plot them in rectangular coordinates, and then we'll try to think about how to connect them. So when theta is 0, sine of 0 is 0, that's going to make r equal to 2. So here is theta equals 0, and I'm going to plot that point. And so this is going to be the same in rectangular as it is in polar. That only happens on the positive x-axis. So 2 comma 0, I'm thinking of as x and y coordinates. When, r, when theta is pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and that's going to make r equal to 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's going to put us right at the pole. When theta is pi, sine theta is back to 0, r is back to 2. So going along the angle pi, I'm going to go out 2. That's going to put me at the rectangular coordinates, negative 2 comma 0. That came from r is is 2 and theta is pi. When theta is 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1 times that negative 2 is going to get us an r value of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to put us down there. I'm going to label that in rectangular coordinates as 0, negative 4. Now, as I imagine now sweeping like using Doppler radar, if you've seen that on the news, so I'm going to start at angle 0, and as I sweep through to the angle pi over 2, the r's are going to go from 2 to 0, so they're going to do something like this in a nice smooth curve. Then as I go from pi over 2 to pi, the r values are going to go from 0 back to 2, so they're going to get bigger again, and it's going to look symmetric. As we go from pi to 3 pi over 2, the r values are going from 2 to 4, so they're getting bigger. And as we go from 3 pi over 2 back to 2 pi, then we're going to go back to an r value of 2. And so what we have is when the a, the a and the b, are equal to each other, then this is known as a cardioid. And I think you can see that, oops, I didn't spell that right, cardioid. It looks like a heart. So I'm going to uh, next do, oh, I wanted to change, I'm going to, 
this three plus, I don't know if I can still erase this. Nope. So I'm gonna change this one to blue. Let me call that three plus two sine theta. But I'm gonna do the green one next. So here you're gonna see that the B is bigger than the A. So again, we're gonna do theta equals zero, theta equals pi over two, theta equals pi, and theta equals three pi over two. And we're gonna find the corresponding R values. So in this case, at zero, cosine of zero is one, and so we're gonna get two plus three, so R is gonna be five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, that's gonna be five, zero in rectangulars. And at pi over 2, cosine theta is 0, so r will be 2. So we're going to be 0, 2, and I'm going to call that 0, 2. At pi, uh, cosine theta is negative 1, times 3 is negative 3, plus 2 makes that a negative 1. Now here's where it gets weird. Remember, this is the angle pi right here, but the r value negative 1 is going to shoot us through the pole, and be right here, which in rectangular coordinates is 1, 0. Hmm, this can be interesting when we graph it. At 3 pi over 2, cosine is back to 0, r is back to 2, and we're to 0, 2 in, 0, negative 2 in rectangulars. Okay, so as we sweep using our Doppler radar, the r values are going to go from 5 to 2, so they're just getting smaller. Now, as we go from an r value of positive 2 to an r value of negative 1, somewhere in between here, it's going to be 0, and so we're going to go through the pole to get to that negative 1. That's the tricky part. Likewise, when we go from an r value of negative 1 back to an r value of positive 2, somewhere in here, it's going to go through 0, the pole. And then it's pretty routine there. So when that B is bigger than the A, we get what is known as a looped limosol. And that's that funny French C with a tail on it. Or uh, uh, you can call it a limosol with an inner loop. Either way. Okay. Now we'll do the blue one. Here, we're going to see that this A is bigger than the B. So again, we're going to do uh, theta equals 0, theta equals pi over 2, theta equals pi, theta equals 3 pi over 2, and find the corresponding R values. So when uh, theta is 0, sine of 0 is 0, we're going to get R is 3, so we have... 3 comma 0. At pi over 2, sine is 1, so r is all the way up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to be 0, 5 on the y-axis. At pi, uh, sine is back to 0, r is back to 3. 1, 2, 3. That's negative 3, 0 in rectangulars. And at 3 pi over 2, sine is going to be negative 1, but that's going to leave us with an R that's still positive. So we never made it to zero here. So as we connect these, it's going to get bigger and bigger. The R's are getting bigger and bigger. Then they're getting smaller and smaller. Now, what's going to be kind of weird here is the R's are a little bit bigger, but then they're going to dip down and then come back up here like this. So you get this dent or dimple to it. So this is called either a dented limosone, or you can also call it a dimpled limosone. Okay? Now the red one I think is the most boring one, but that's okay. We'll still do it. Oops, I wrote down the wrong one. <clears throat> let me uh, fix this. I wanted this. Mm, that's not going to let me do that. So I meant the 5 to be here, 5 minus 2 cosine theta is equal to r. So I want the a to be more than twice as big as the b. Okay, so let's find theta 0, theta equals pi over 2, theta equals pi, theta equals 
3 pi over 2 and find the r's that go with those. So at 0, uh, cosine 0 is 1, so 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. So you got 1, 2, 3. And at pi over 2, cosine is 0, so r is all the way up to 5. Then we call that 0, 5. At pi, cosine is going to be a negative 1, so now we're even bigger. So I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to call that negative 7, 0. And at 3 pi over 2, cosine is back to 0, and we're back to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, it looks sort of like uh, the one we just did, only it's never going to even head towards the pole. So these are getting bigger, then these are getting bigger, but these are getting smaller, but not in a way that you get any kind of dent or dimple. And so what you get is something that kind of looks like a big egg. It's known as a convex lemosome. Not very interesting, but we still have to know it. Okay, and finally, uh, which the ones I think are really boring, are the lemnus gates. So these are going to be in the form r squared e equals a cosine 2 theta or r squared equals a sine 2 theta. <clears throat> so these are going to look like propeller blades or figure eights. So this will be its biggest. When you take, when cosine is equal to 1, the biggest it's going to be, we'll get r squared equals 4. So the biggest r will ever be is 2. So that's the furthest away from the pole or the origin that our graph will ever be. So I'm going to kind of do this unit or the circle as with radius 2 as kind of a guideline. Now the this cosine will be its biggest when cosine 2 theta is equal to 1. But cosine is its biggest at 0, and that means this is going to uh, be oriented, we say, along the angle 0, theta equals 0. And so now I'm just going to go right to the graph, which is why this isn't terribly interesting. It's a little rounder than... Um, than a rose curve, but it's going to look something like that. So it's a lemnus gate. It looks like this figure eight or a propeller blade. And because it was a cosine curve, we say it is oriented along the, the angle theta equals zero. Now, similarly, we're going to get that the biggest r can be in the blue graph. Nine sine two theta is going to be three. So I'm going to as a guide, try to draw a circle of radius 3. So the curve will never go outside of this circle. Now, this will be its biggest when sine 2 theta is its biggest. And sine is its biggest at the angle pi over 2, which means this will be oriented along the angle pi over 4. And that's about as interesting a lemnus gate as we can get. It's going to be a figure 8 that, or, that is oriented along the angle that equals pi over 4. All right, very good.